and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed them by, would have passed by them. And when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts this morning the reading, that reading from His own precious truth. When trouble, when troublesome and trying and terrifying times come. And mind ye the come, and they can come in a thousand and one different ways. Times of great trouble, may I say. We're often asking the question, where is the Lord when you need Him? You know, life for all of us, child of God, can become topsy-turvy. The calm sea of life can soon be thrown into a terrible catastrophe. And I can tell you this, child of God, each and every one of our lives can throw us into such a state It leaves sometimes with no hope in view. And it's during those times when you sense, really sense the need of the Lord, you find yourself asking the question, where is the Lord? when I need Him. Where is the Lord when we need Him? You remember in John's Gospel, chapter 11, you remember the story of Lazarus. He becomes sick, you know, and you remember the two sisters, Mary and Martha. They send for the Lord Jesus, and the message the Lord Jesus received was, Behold whom thou lovest is sick. And the Lord Jesus knew he was sick. And the Lord Jesus sensed that fear and that sense of need that came from that call. But you know the strange thing about that story was in verse 6 we read, 
that even though the Lord Jesus knew the seriousness of that situation, even though he knew the need and the longing for him to go and to meet the point of need at Lazarus's home, you know what the verse 6 says? He abode where he was for another two days. I can imagine Mary and Martha sitting at the bed's height, every knock coming to the door, well, maybe that's him now, only to be disappointed. And they're saying to each other, where is the Lord when we need Him? And the days are passing, the hours are passing, and they're watching Lazarus, and he's lost in a pile of weight, and the breathing's getting tight. And they're asking the question more frequent, where is the Lord when we need Him? And all of a sudden, the breathing gets very, very long. Where's the Lord when we need Him? And they watch Him as He delays His breathing, and all of a sudden, He gives that last sigh, and it's, it's all over now. You can see the two sisters wondering, where is the Lord when we need Him? Then they come and they wind Him up in the, in the claws and wish for burial, and they're carrying Him out from the house now. And the sisters were saying, well, maybe, maybe we'll meet Him now coming down the road. Christ was nowhere to be seen. And as they were carrying him to the grave, maybe the Savior will be at the graveside, but he was nowhere to be seen. And the two sisters are just standing there dumbfounded. Where is the Lord when we need him? And they bury him in the tomb, they lay him in the tomb, and they roll the stone upon the tomb. And, ah, well, maybe he'll be at the house when we get back home again, but. There was no sight nor sign of it. One day comes, two day comes, three day comes. Lazarus is sick, he's now dead, he's now buried, he's there almost four days. Mary, I say, Martha, Martha. Yes, Mary, where? Where is the Lord when we need him? Where is it? Where was the Lord when we needed Him most? If you read carefully in John's Gospel, chapter 4, or chapter 11, you'll notice the Lord Jesus. He was totally absent. He was nowhere to be seen when Mary and Martha needed Him most. Maybe that's you this morning. But you know the Lord wants to speak to us through this passage of Scripture that we've come to, because we're going to come to twelve men in one boat. The twelve disciples. On last Thursday evening, our brother Glenn ministered at, the, at our midweek, but the Lord in that storm he was there in the boat, but he's not in the boat in this storm. The Lord's nowhere to be seen. But you see, child of God, this morning, when we come to the storms of life, sometimes the Savior, he almost goes into hiding on us, or so it seems. And the Lord's nowhere to be seen. But do you know something this morning? There's a wee message the Lord has given me concerning this scene. And the Lord wants us to see 
just how He comes to us and just when He comes to us, when we think He doesn't care. I want you to notice very well, the Lord wants us to notice. It's not me, it's because it's the Lord's message. And the Lord wants us to see this morning and speak to us through the words of my text. My text this morning is found in verse 48 of our Scripture reading. Now, let's take a wee look and see what 48 says. Verse 48, and it says there, And he saw them toiling and rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed them by. You know, we need to first of all realize that this storm wasn't the result of disobedience. These disciples were right in the very place where the Lord wanted them to be. He constrained them to get into the ship, and He constrained them to get to the other side there. And these twelve disciples were in the very place where the Lord wanted them. They were totally in the will of the Lord. But you know, sometimes, child of God, even though when we are in the will of God and we are in the place where God wants us and we're living lives that please God and glorify Him, that doesn't stop the storms from coming. You know there is a purpose in the storms of life. You see, these twelve disciples they're now being tossed in the waves, and the Lord is nowhere to be seen. You know, sometimes the Lord does that in our storms when they come. We read the Word of God, we study the Word of God, and sometimes storms are sent. Sometimes storms are allowed to come, and the Lord stands back when we are in the midst of the storm just to see what we have learned about Him. You know, the Lord just stood back for a, for a few hours just to see if these twelve disciples have learned anything at all. For I'll tell you something now, the greatest lessons you'll ever learn are in the storms of life. I want you to notice how the Lord wants us to all notice this morning. When we are struggling to cope with unbearable circumstances, when we are struggling to cope with impossible situation, and there's nowhere to turn, and it's out of your control, and you can do absolutely nothing about what you're going through. The Lord, through these words, wants to show us how He come. Did you notice in verse 48 in that text, He came unto them in the face of darkness. It says in verse 48 there, it says, And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them. You see, child of God, it's lovely just to see the time that's within the text there. It doesn't say there this morning that he came when it was getting dark. The fourth watch of the night was when the darkness of the night was at its darkest. There was no sign or sight of light anywhere. He didn't come unto them when it was getting dark. He didn't come unto them when it was almost dark. 
He came unto them when darkness was at its darkest. You know, friend, this morning it's in our darkest moments. It's when the Lord comes, you know. Those moments when all hope is gone, all sight of, of hope is gone. And we read in Matthew 14, 24 concerning the same, the same instance it says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Think of the desolation of the place. And the wind was contrary, and they were far from land. They were far from hope, and they were far from Him. Think of the desolation that these disciples endured. Alone. In the midst of the terrible storm, four miles from land, four miles from shore. And no matter where they turned, there was nothing, only wind and waves. And you think of the desolation of the place. And you know, friends, this evening or this morning, I can almost see these disciples. They're totally exhausted here. Their strength is exhausted. Their expectation is exhausted. And their praying is almost exhausted. Their faith is exhausted. Their hope is exhausted. And inwardly they're crying, where is the Lord that we need Him? And they're almost round the bend. Maybe this morning, child of God, you're going through a storm and nobody knows about it. I can tell you, there's many ways storms come. And maybe there's a brother here this morning, maybe there's a sister here this morning, and you're almost astray in the head. And you can't see a way out of what you're going through. And you're alone. And you feel abandoned. And you feel helpless this morning. And you feel hopeless this morning. And the wind and the waves are threatening to put you under. Ah, think of the danger of the place. Think of the darkness of the place. They're engulfed in darkness. I'm telling you, it's not a nice place to be when you're engulfed with darkness and the darkness. The darkness hides him from you. Maybe it's a son or a daughter, I don't know. Maybe it's your job this morning. Maybe it's your health this morning. Or some other way, and I don't know about it, nor it's not in my business. But the Lord knows about it, and the Lord knows all about it. And as far as you're concerned, your troubles and your trials, are leaving you in a very dangerous, desolate, dark place. And that's how you've come to this meeting. But the Lord wants to say this to you. And I believe the Lord wants to use my lips just to say this to you. I come to you in the face of darkness. Even though my face is hidden from you, your face isn't hid from me. Notice the Savior came to them on the face, in the face of darkness. Notice secondly in that verse that the Savior came to them in the face of defeat. 
he came to them in the face of defeat. Notice how the verse opens there for us this morning because it says, and he saw them toiling and rowing. You know, that proves our previous thought this morning. Even though his face was hidden from view, yet they were not hidden from his view. He saw them. And I'll tell you, not only does he see them there, let me tell you this, he feels for them there. Feels for them. And struggling saint of God this morning, the Lord not only sees you in the storm, he feels for you. He feels for you. And it says, and, and, and he saw them toiling in the rowing. And even though, child of God, you cannot see him and you cannot find him this morning, let me tell you, he sees you. And he knows exactly who you are and he knows exactly where you are. And he knows exactly how you are. Yes, the disciples, they couldn't see him, couldn't find him anywhere. Ah, but he could find the disciples. He knew where they were. Knows where you are this morning in that darkness of loneliness. in that darkness of grief and sorrow. That's why the hymn writer penned those words. Jesus knows all about our struggles. Jesus knows our every weakness. He watches the disciples. He sees them struggling. He sees them exhausted. He sees them wore out. He sees them defeated. And that's when Jesus came to them in the face of defeat. He came to them in the face of darkness. He came to them in verse 48 in the face of defeat. Thirdly and finally, most importantly, he came to them on the face of the deep. Because the truth says, the text says, he came unto them walking on the sea. Something wonderful about that, you know. He came to them on the face of the deep. Here's the lovely thought that I was blessed with and I want to share it with you. The very thing that petrified the disciples was only a path to the Savior. The very waves that terrified them <laughs> was the path that he went on to them. The very thing that frightened them, the very thing that scared them, the very thing that threatened them was the very thing the Lord used to bring Himself to them. Notice this, the wind and the waves was contrary to them. Do you know what that means? It was against them in every way. 
but the very thing that was contrary to them brought Jesus to them. You know, here's a wee thought. The storm was greater than the disciples. The storm was greater than the disciples. But Christ was greater than the storm. Their problem was his path in bringing him to them. Notice what the text doesn't say. It doesn't say that they came to him. No, no, no. Read it carefully. No, no. He went to them walking on the water. Not them coming to him, but he came to them. Let me say this because I believe that somebody needs to hear this. The storm that you're going through is greater than what you can bear. But listen. Christ is greater than your storm. The very storm, the very waves that threatened to sink these disciples was totally subject under his feet. You know the Lord Jesus was sovereign over the storm here. I want you to know this, child of God, the Lord is sovereign over your storm. It was the storm the Savior used to bring himself to these disciples. It was the storm, through the storm, that these disciples saw the Savior in a different light. They never saw him walking on a storm before. You see, storms are sent not to shatter our faith, but to stabilize our faith. Blessings in the life of a believer must be balanced. Balanced with burdens and balanced with battles. You see, faith has to be built. And it's the burdens of life and the battles of life that strengthens our faith, that exercises us to use our faith. And these disciples, in the midst of the terrible storm, when they thought he didn't care, and when he was nowhere to be seen, the very storm was the very transport that Christ used to bring him to them in a different way. The picture that is painted is this. The storm was greater than them, but he was greater than the storm. And he's greater than your storm, dear. Whatever it is, he's greater than your storm. And it may be that storm of yours. And through that storm of yours, Christ will come to you in a new way. And your faith will be deepened. And your faith will become stronger. Because oftentimes the storms are planned and the storms are purposed to bring him closer to you and to me. He came unto them in the face of darkness. 
He came to them in the face of defeat. He came to them on the face of the deep when all hope was gone. Does Jesus really care when the storms and the wind and the waves are hurling? Oh, yes, he cares. Troubled sin. The storm is great. I know. But he's greater than the storm. May God encourage you and bless you through his word here this morning. We're going to sing as our closing hymn the lovely words of hymn number four.